Um, so Jamie, how do you address cybersecurity and confidentiality <coughs> concerns around AI with customers? Uh, yeah, um, good question. So yeah, I, I think that uh, because this is, you know, a lot of these, the AI developed right now, as far as the core AI engines are being done by some of these larger organizations or very specialized organizations, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're partnering or being accessible to the right area or organizations. At, at Five9, I'll just tell you, we have a, um, a pretty strict policy. We don't allow any of our technology partners to use our customers' data to help train their models, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a big, for us, a big no-no, right? Um, so we control that. And we have, we, we, we use SLAs and agreements. You know, for instance, you know, somebody might say, oh, I can just go to OpenAI and use this large language model to create this kind of automation. It's like, no, we wouldn't do that. You know, for instance, we use OpenAI, but we use it through Azure. And the reason why do we use it with Microsoft Azure? Because we can put strict SLA controls in there. You know, we can define what the latency requirements are. We're going to define what the security requirements are. Um, and we are going to be auditing them, making sure that, that they follow through. So, you know, these are things you have to consider as you implement this. You know, if you work, and, and we do that because we only deal with enterprise, right? It's expected. We, we only work with organizations that are HIPAA and PCI um, certified, right? Because we are. We have to be for every one of our customers. It's just it's not even an option. But there's others that aren't. So just those are kind of pitfalls to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and we try to deal with we we try to be transparent. You know, find an organization that you work with that's transparent about how they do the policies, and you have accessibility. And you know what they're doing with regards to this. That's really key um, because it's not always that clear um, in, in this in this area. A lot of startups are jumping out there and doing things. I think they're just just not as mature in understanding of what the requirements are in certain other se uh, industries and segments. So, so in our case, because we're so broadly uh, oriented, we have to know that and we have to be that way. Not only regulatory in the United States, but you know in Europe and Asia. So that's really important to find out.